Today we're gonna learn about the ruby-throated hummingbird. And before we start, I wanna show you a video of hummingbirds so you can see how they move and what they eat, what colors they are. So as you see this video, you can be thinking if you've ever seen a hummingbird before, maybe in a garden or in a park, and then we're gonna talk a lot more about them. 50 different species, they are dazzling in their diversity. The smallest of all warm-blooded creatures, they live on the edge of survival. So we saw a little bit about hummingbirds on that video. So can you think if, if maybe you've seen one of those before? Oh, I see some people nodding their heads and raising their hands. So maybe you've seen them in a park or in your backyard. Yes. My house. At your house. So, the kind of hummingbird that we're gonna learn about today is called the ruby-throated hummingbird. And the reason that we're learning about that kind of bird is because it's the only one that lives right here in Tennessee. Here's a picture of it right there. Wow. So, you've heard me say its name a couple times today, ruby-throated hummingbird. That's a long name, isn't it, for an animal? And the reason that it's called that is because if we look at its throat, have you heard the word throat before? Can you touch your throat? This is your throat. It's the part of your body that's at the front of your neck. And sometimes, have you ever had a cold and maybe your throat hurts? Sometimes when I have colds, my throat hurts. So this is your throat right here. And so the ruby-throated hummingbird has a ruby color on its throat. And this is what a ruby looks like. A ruby is a gemstone. It's kind of like a diamond, but it's this beautiful <coughs> red color. So we have a ruby-throated hummingbird. And again, it looks like this. So do you see the ruby color on its throat? Mm -hmm. So that's why it's called a ruby-throated hummingbird. So when you think about migrate, the word migrate, can someone look at this? What, what letter does it start with? M. 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 So some, a way that I remember the word migrate is it starts with M like the word move. So they're moving from one place to another. Olivia, can you hang the word migrate on our vocabulary wall? Thank you. So this is, it's a hummingbird's life. And it's about a hummingbird and what it does in the different seasons, the four different seasons of the year. So we as people do different things in the four seasons, in winter, in fall, in spring, and in summer. In winter, I put on my coat and I look for snow. What else do you do in the winter? What are some things you do? Snowman. You make a snowman. What else? Snowman. You make snowmen. And then in the spring, I have a snowball fight. So we do certain things in the winter. In spring, it gets warm. I like to look at the flowers in spring. In summer, that's when it gets really hot. Swim. And what? You go to the swimming pool. What else do you do in the summer? Play with my, play with, play with my friends. You play with your friends in the summer? Go to the park. Mm -hmm. And then the last season is fall, and fall is when the leaves change colors. And do you ever, you're right. And we can rake the leaves into piles and jump on them. So just like we do different things in the four seasons, so does the hummingbird. And so we're gonna talk about what the hummingbird does in spring, summer, fall, and winter. So let's get started. It's A Hummingbird's Life by Irene Kelly. And if you need to move so you can see the illustrations, you can. Thank you. What is a hummingbird's life? Very, very busy all year round. And I see some labels in this book. This says male. This says female. So one thing that I notice right away is that the male and the female look different. I see that the male hummingbird has the ruby throat. Does the female hummingbird have the ruby throat? No. So we can know is which one's a, um, a, a male and a female, which is a boy and a girl. 
Spring is a busy time in the life of the ruby-throated hummingbird. It begins with the gigantic job of building a tiny, tiny nest. The nest is only as big as half a ping pong ball. Besides the occasional fishing boat, the only place for a hummingbird to rest <coughs> during this flight is on a, does anybody know what that is? Hot air balloon. A hot air balloon. Sometimes hot air balloonists hang feeders, hummingbird feeders, from their basket to give the voyager a much appreciated snack. The tiny birds keep going even after the sun sets. So this is the last page of our fall section. So now let's think about what do hummingbirds do in the fall? Think about it and keep it in your head. I'll show you some pictures to help you remember. And then tell somebody sitting next to you, what do they do? And then raise your hand. Who can tell us? It's a very important thing that hummingbirds do in the fall. Wow. Yes, Holland. Fly to Florida. Uh-huh. First they fly to Florida, exactly. And then where do they fly? Mexico. Mexico. To Mexico. Tyler, did you have something to add? They can fly to Mexico. Mm-hmm. Florida whenever it starts to get cold. You're right. When it gets cold, when it gets nippy outside. And can anyone remember that word? that we talked about that's on our vocabulary wall. Migrate. migrate. So that's their word. They migrate from Tennessee to Florida and then down to Mexico and South America. So that is our book. We learned so many facts about hummingbirds and what they learn in the spring, summer, fall, and winter. So now it's your turn to remember all of those facts that you learned And in just a minute, oh, can you fix that, Taylor? Thank you. You're going to go back to your tables, and you're going to look at this chart, which is just like the one that we've had up here. And you're going to think about what hummingbirds do in the spring, summer, fall, and winter. You can use pictures, you can use words, or you can use sentences. So let's do some together. Let's practice. Can you think about way back in the beginning about the book, about what they did in the spring? What did we read first? What's one thing we can remember about what they do in the spring? And I'll call on somebody who's raising their hand. Holland. Make a nest. You're right. So, do you think, Holland, should I draw a picture? Should I write a word? Or should I write <coughs> the sentence, they make a nest? You'd like me to draw a picture. So that's one way that I can show my understanding about hummingbirds. So in the spring section, here's going to be my nest. And there's going to be my nest. Do you remember some of the materials they used to make their nest? Feathers. Yep, so I can write, I can use some labels, I can use some words, so maybe I'll write the word feathers, I heard the word sticks, spider silk, you're right, spider silk. So now if I'm talking to somebody about what I learned, I can tell them in spring, hummingbirds build a nest and they make it with feathers, sticks, and spider silk. So that's one thing that I can record on my paper. And you can begin as soon as you have your pencils and crayons, you can get started and do exactly what we did over here. You can use pictures or words or sentences to write about all the things you remember about hummingbirds. Do you want to draw a picture or write a sentence? Okay, that's a great one. You're right, they have eggs in spring. Are those the, two, the eggs in the nest?
Put your pencils on the desk. Put your crayons back in your crayon box. If you're not finished right now, we can find some time to finish later. Now what I want everyone to do, I want you to pick up your paper, stand up, push in your chair, and come back to the carpet. Thank you for walking so quietly and peacefully. Thank you, Taylor. That was a nice idea to walk around the table. Now I want you to look at your paper, and I want you to choose your favorite of the four seasons that you wrote or drew about. So choose one that's your favorite that you want to share with a friend. and then turn to somebody near you, show them your paper, and tell them what you drew or wrote about. Yeah, you two can turn around. <coughs> yeah, can you write us a sentence? Hummingbird. So. And if you want to find another friend, see if you can find another friend and share your favorite sentence with them. Can you read it a little louder? Can you read it so I can hear it? Great. Can you read your favorite one? Thank you so much for sharing your ideas. I'm so impressed with the facts that you remember. Now when I say go, I'm gonna ask you to stand up. Wait till I say go. Walk back to your desk, put your paper on your table, and then come back to your seat on the carpet. Go. Thank you for walking peacefully. We're putting our papers on our tables and coming back to the carpet.